As the fighting in Ukraine continues to intensify, many Western nations are mobilizing resources to bolster the warfighting capabilities of the Ukrainian army. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has made it clear that there are two crucial weapons that his army needs, which are main battle tanks and fighter jets. So far, the West has pledged around 200 tanks to support Ukraine's counteroffensive, but much is still needed to tip the balance of power in the Ukrainian army's favor. The two most capable tanks currently operated by the Ukrainian army are the German Leopard tank and the British Challenger tank. However, a specific tank has been the point of contention between Ukraine and the West, with many fearing that its acquisition by Kiev may further draw the ire of Moscow. The tank in question is the American M1 Abrams, which entered service in the United States military in the late 1980s and is considered by many as one of the finest and most capable tanks in the world. Weighing around 70 tons, the Abrams enjoys much more armor protection than those enjoyed by Russian and other Eastern tanks. In addition, all Abrams tanks are equipped with depleted uranium armor and ammunition, which makes them a formidable threat on the battlefield. The Abrams is also equipped with highly modern laser rangefinders and fire control systems, which granted the opportunity to make the most of its ammunition in terms of range and accuracy. Many have questioned the utility of the Abrams tank for a number of reasons. First, Abrams is equipped with a turbojet engine that relies on jet fuel rather than conventional diesel for power. This makes it more expensive to operate and more complicated to maintain. Adding to this, it is highly unlikely that the US government will authorize the transfer of Abrams tanks built to US standards to Ukraine. This is because of the chance that the technology embedded in the tank would be compromised, which would help Russia, if it succeeds in capturing one of the tanks, into developing better means of eliminating it in any future conflict. However, as time goes on, more pressure is added to the US government to supply Ukraine with more sophisticated armor that would allow it to push back Russian forces and reclaim lost territories. The United States has succeeded in convincing many of its allies, such as Poland, to transfer its more obsolescent tanks to Ukraine in exchange for Abrams tanks from US stock. But this seems to be a limited and temporary solution, as most of European NATO members lack sufficient quantities of main battle tanks to fulfill the needs of their own armed forces. This has motivated analysts and spectators alike to look for alternatives outside of Europe and NATO member states. Alternatives such as Morocco and Pakistan have been suggested, but even those are not proving sufficient to supply the needs of the Ukrainian armed forces. This has further motivated speculation of even the most unlikely providers of military equipment. One of those unlikely military providers is Egypt. Being the most populous country in the Middle East and North Africa, as well as the Eastern Mediterranean, Egypt has built a formidable army over the years as it is surrounded by many unstable and hostile nations. An example of this would be Libya, where militancy has been a problem for more than a decade. Egypt and Ethiopia, while not bordering each other, have been provoking each other into military conflict for quite some time now. Ethiopia has not stopped taking unilateral actions when it comes to the building and filling of its dam on the Nile River. In addition to this, Egypt is the owner of the Suez Canal, responsible for roughly 12% of all the world's trade. Egypt also happens to hold massive hydrocarbon reserves and a potential for even more reserves, especially in its western desert and the Mediterranean Sea, where it has already discovered vast natural gas reserves. All of this, along with the country's historical conflicts with Israel, as well as its regional commitment to security, has driven Egypt to invest heavily in its military capabilities. The country's ground forces are the largest in the region, consisting of eight mechanized divisions and four heavy armored divisions. The mechanized divisions are mainly equipped with American M60A3 upgraded main battle tanks, while the country's armored divisions are equipped with American M1 Abrams tanks. Egypt has succeeded in domestically assembling and manufacturing close to 1,500 American M1 Abrams tanks. These were based on the A1 variant, which does not require or rely on the heavy turbine engines of the American variant. In addition to this, the country's variant also integrates electronics and fire control systems from other nations such as Germany and France. 
The country's large inventory of U.S. tanks has made it a possible provider of military equipment to the Ukrainian armed forces. However, any transfer of M1 Abrams tanks from the Egyptian arsenal would most likely mean a reduction in the warfighting capabilities of the country's armored divisions, a withdrawal from the possible strategic reserve stockpiles that Cairo has. Both of these scenarios make the notion of a transfer of Egyptian tanks from local inventories a non-starter. Egypt does maintain economic and diplomatic relations with Ukraine, but it also enjoys exceptional economic, diplomatic, and defense relations with Russia. Russian arms sales to Egypt are credited as the main driver behind the technological leap in warfighting capabilities that the Egyptian military has achieved over the past 10 years. Unlike the US, Russia does not put restrictions on the type of weapons it may provide to Cairo, including beyond visual range, active radar guided air to air missiles, in addition to standoff air to ground munitions such as cruise missiles and glide bombs. Russia is also responsible for the building of Egypt's first nuclear power plant on a commercial scale. Once the power plant comes online, it will represent an economic leap for the country, as it will help the country produce much cheaper, clean energy, which will not only reduce the country's high pollution levels, but also save significant amounts of its natural gas reserves that can be redirected for exports. That the country's military does not need the equipment it has been purchasing stem from a lack of understanding of Egyptian military doctrine and strategic planning. Since the beginning of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi's presidency, the country has poured a lot of resources into its military infrastructure and equipment to better enable the country's armed forces to fight a protracted, long duration conflict against technologically advanced peers on multiple fronts simultaneously. All of this has motivated the country to make changes in its doctrine, especially in terms of acquiring long-range precision munitions and upgrading its command and control infrastructure in order to carry out such a daunting task. And, if history serves as any indication, any possible compensation for the country's transfer of advanced military equipment will not be worthwhile, as the US has historically made it difficult for Egypt to acquire qualitatively relevant weapon systems. In conclusion, as Western nations mobilize resources to provide Ukraine with the weapons and ammunition it needs to push back Russian military forces, it is the responsibility of analysts and spectators alike to offer reasonable and realistic alternatives as well as options with the intention of providing actual solutions instead of simply stirring up controversy. Thank you very much for watching and make sure to subscribe for future videos.